guys, Daniel here with another review video. Today I'm reviewing the Galaxy GT240 NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, this particular model is the 512 megabytes of GDDR5 version. Uh, there is another version of this card, except it's slightly more expensive and it's only a gig of GDDR3. So this one supposedly is better while playing um, while playing games than the other one simply because it has GDDR3 instead of GDDR5. Uh, starting with the card itself, first thing you'll notice is that it has a really nice fan and the heatsink is pretty bulky, which, uh, which is nice. Uh, the idle temps are actually really, really cold compared to, uh, compared to my 5770 I sold for this. Uh, I got this card as a replacement. For when I get my next graphics card, I'm going to pair this up with my next one, which is definitely going to be an ATI card. Uh, and I'm just going to use this for dedicated physics. Uh, so for the outputs, it has a DVI, it has a VGA, and an HDMI, which is really good. Um, I was actually surprised that it had an HDMI because I don't think the other model had it. I could be wrong though. Uh, one thing that I really like about this card is that it's a 40 nanometer technology, which means that uh, it it's optimized. It's not. I mean, it's optimized for uh, for lower wattage power supply. So you could pair this up with a 400 watt power supply in your system, and it'll still run pretty good. Um, the power supply or the uh, the heatsink screws are here in the back. You can take them off and replace the heatsink if you wanted. The one gripe I have about this heatsink is that there aren't any heatsinks for the RAM. So if you're going to overclock the RAM, uh, it could get hot. Uh, I remember on one occasion I tried to overclock it and I just got it just got way too hot. I think it overheated and it started giving me really low frames. Um, other than that, the card is really good. It's a really well built card. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem as far as heat goes and overclocking. Now the core clock is set at 550 stock, but I've gotten it up as or up to about 260 core clock, and the shader is at 1340 megahertz. I think I've gotten that up to 1800 megahertz. I'm not too sure, uh, but it handles itself pretty well when overclocking. I just use MSI Afterburn. And yeah, that's pretty much the card. I'll show some benchmarks with this card uh, later in the video. But something else I'd like to address is the packaging that it came in. The box it came in, I was actually pretty surprised because it was, it's, it's better packaged than most cards. I got a 9800 GTX a while ago, and it was probably the same kind of packaging, but a little. A little less loose. This one comes inside of a box, and around that box is little styrofoam uh, placeholders. So I mean, it's really, really nice that the company, that Galaxy, is putting the effort into uh, making sure the card gets to you safe. Uh, oh, one last thing I forgot about the card is that it has 96 CUDA cores, which is pretty cool. I ran this with physics enabled and Mafia 2. And I think I was able to get about 40 frames, but I turned the settings down really low. But this thing handles physics really, really well. And yeah, that's, that's it for this portion. Another thing I noticed when installing this card is that it doesn't actually require a power connector, which I really liked. And unfortunately, there is no SLI cross bridge. So if you're planning on getting a second one, you should probably consider either a GT260 or above. The temperatures are around 41 Celsius when at idle, but the max I've ever seen it get is about 60, and that's when it's under like a lot of load uh, for quite a long time. I'd say about two to three hours. And uh, so when I first got the card, I installed physics. I installed the new Nvidia, or yeah, the new Nvidia drivers. And everything ran great, and I was actually surprised at how well the installation went because I had gotten a 9800 GTX Plus, and I had a few problems getting physics enabled, but with this one it just came right up. As you can see, it's working fine. Uh, the physics are running well. It's at about 55 Celsius right now, and the memory is at 1800 megahertz. 
Uh, frames are uh, about 30 in the 30 area. And I mean, it's running as well as you would expect an $80 car to. I mean, it's it's doing pretty admirably com c uh, considering it's such a cheap card. Uh, like I said, the temperatures don't get too high, so that's a plus. And it's actually surprisingly quiet. I noticed that while running this on max, while like while heavily overclocked, at full at like 100% capacity or at 100% fan speed, it's still at about 70 to 80 percent as loud as my 5770 was at about 70 fan speeds. So that's, I mean, that's something to something to take into consideration. And yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. The card it does it does well for how much you pay for it. And I'll put up a few videos of uh, little small benchmarks after I show this. So uh, I hope you you guys have enjoyed. Here. Ah! Uh. Uh. 